here in the studio. The New York Times food writer Mark Bittman is with us to talk about changing his and thereby our relationship with fish, the creatures of the sea. But what I wanted to do is give listeners a, a real tangible sense of how you evaluate fish. Now, here is a farm-raised salmon, okay? You see this fish, looks gorgeous, but what's the cautionary tale behind it? In a way, farm-raised salmon brought salmon to a much larger audience because before that, the Alaskan catch was mostly canned and, and it was seasonal anyway, and it was heralded as the dawn of a new age. This was aquaculture at its best, but... But um, it has been shown to be seriously polluting in the environments in which it's grown. It, um, it's often laden with antibiotics. There are some worries about uh, whether escapees breed with wild fish and therefore degrade the quality of the wild fish or degrade their ability to, to survive in well, the it's, wild. It's a biodiversity question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, what about <laughs> Chilean sea bass? Looks delicious here on the plate. Uh, actually called Patagonian toothfish. Um, Chilean sea bass uh, was another of the f many substitutes for cod, which itself was endangered long ago. And, um, you know, it tastes really good. But anytime, you s anytime the big marketers say, oh, here's a fish we can sell, and it starts to get sold in big numbers, it becomes endangered. And Chilean sea bass is actually coming off the endangered species list, um, but had a few very rough years there where the catch had to be limited. So farm-raised shrimp, come on, this has to be benign. You, you're, you're that's not harvesting exactly them. the problem. It's benign. It doesn't taste like anything. Uh, in fact, in fact, farm-raising shrimp has gotten much better. There are fewer antibiotics. It's, it's being done in a better manner. They have to figure out how to make it taste like something. It's simply not worth eating. Now, this is a, a sort of a Holocaust-looking picture of bluefin tuna there at the harvest all uh, laid out. Japan, there. no doubt. Well, yeah. this is, um, you know, bluefin tuna is arguably one of the best eating fish in the world, but it is seriously endangered and really if i had to say one thing i would say don't eat it don't eat bluefin do, do not not until not until things change it's very clear to me this is the way that we have to go you can't eat other species if you're going to decimate them i mean there's arguments to be made that you can't eat them at all having bypassed those arguments i would like to say you uh, to me if you want to eat bluefin tuna, you have to hold back for a few years, and maybe it'll come back to sustainable numbers again. What are your caveats? I mean, you haven't sworn fish off entirely, but when is it appropriate? I eat less fish in general than I used to, so that's number one. I won't eat anything that's endangered. If you know, for example, that cod is really struggling right now, you just can't eat it for a while. And bluefin is the perfect example of that. If you can find out which fish are factory farmed or which fish are farmed by trawlers that are ripping up the ocean floor, I think those are good to stay away from also. These external environmental details, even as you explain them to me, does affect my appetite. I'm, I think I'm less likely to eat bluefin tuna because I know what sort of horrors it goes through out in the ocean. There's, you know, that's why we don't eat harp seals. Well, that's the thing. I keep saying to people, pretend it's whale. Would you eat it if it were whale? And there the answer go. is always that's no. That's perfect. That's so perfect. So it's like that. It's endangered. It's a real thing. Pretend it's whale. <laughs> pretend it's whale. From philosopher. Okay, he's not a philosopher. Mark Bittman, thanks so much. Thanks, Rod.